Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host Nathan B. Butler, author of A Saga on Home Video, available now in its three volume second edition over on Amazon in hardback, paperback, and on Kindle. What we're taking a look at this time is another of our top five lists. Now this isn't necessarily a positive or a negative list this time. Instead, we want to look at the top five things that in my mind, my mind, my list, my ideas, feel free to disagree, um, in my mind, uh, the things that stand out as the top five items that are simply missing from the Star Wars Home Video Library at a retail level across the board. And I say across the board because I do mean just flat out missing. Not available in some regions, but not in others. But straight up does not exist. So, for example, the fact that the U.S. doesn't have Revenge of the Sith on VHS doesn't make the list. Because it exists on VHS in other regions like the U.K., Japan, and so on. Likewise, the fact that the third episode of the Yoda Chronicles doesn't exist in the U.S. on physical media at retail, that doesn't count either because you could get it in, say, Germany as a promo item, but still a retail promo item, or in Scandinavia. Technically, they exist, so doesn't make the list. And again, I'm sure some out there will disagree on the prioritization of these, might have other ones they want to add to the list. Feel free to put those in the comments. This is simply the five that spring to mind for me as the constant frustrations that these just don't exist in any region for me to actually pick up and add to my Star Wars home video collection. Uh, for what it's worth, one honorable mention before we start, and that goes to Resistance Season 2. Resistance Season 2 never got a physical media release at retail in the United States, uh, or from what I can tell, anywhere else in the world, because by that time they were transitioning over, and now you can find it digitally or on Disney+, Plus, but not physically. Why is it not as big a frustration for me? Well, one, you can watch it digitally, you can watch it on Disney+. Plus. Um, and, quite frankly, if we had gotten it, it probably would have been DVD only, given the fact that Season 1 was DVD only in an era of 4K and at least Blu-ray. Um, and I just wasn't a big fan of Resistance. A little too cartoony and goofy for me, even relative to other Star Wars cartoons that we had seen before. So, Resistance Season 2, you get an honorable mention. You don't make the top five. I know, I'm sure that's a catastrophe. Or, excuse me, a catastrophe in the minds of Resistance fans. So we'll start here with my number five. Five, five, five. And this one actually is something that, oddly enough, I own multiple copies of, but has never seen a retail release. Only screeners. And that is one of my favorite Star Wars documentaries of all time. Right? You might say, oh, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of a saga. No, that is one of my favorites, but that one has gotten releases, just not in recent years. There were VHS and Laserdisc and so on. What I'm talking about is the one where around... Uh, one of the big anniversaries for Star Wars, around the 30th anniversary, back in 2007, um, you had people get together from all walks of life. You your actors and your entertainment people. You've got politicians and others all coming together to celebrate the legacy of Star Wars and its impact on the culture. That was in a documentary called Star Wars The Legacy Revealed. Um, I loved that documentary. Um, Star Wars Legacy Real is one that I can watch over and over and over again and not get tired of it. I just really enjoy that one for some reason. But it's never gotten a retail home video release. There was a press screener, there was an Emmy screener, there was a fan site screener, the first screener I was ever actually sent myself. Um, and there was that kind of oddball screener, we never quite figured out who it went to, where the screener was in kind of that nice box. But all just screeners. Never something put out for release where you could just go buy it. You had to get it for some reason as a screener, as a preview, or a promotional item. Um, it still bugs me to this day that the Legacy Revealed has not gotten the attention it deserves. Now, the good news is the screeners are pretty easy to come by. Not so much the boxed one, but the Emmy ones show up constantly on eBay. So it's not tough to get your hands on a screener for the Legacy Revealed and actually be able to watch it, either in unfinished or finished form, depending on which screener you have. But... The fact that it hasn't got a retail release kind of stinks, and obviously this long after the fact, no one imagined it's going to. Number four is one of the items that a lot of folks are probably going to think of as number one, but to me, other stuff takes precedence over this one. And that is, of course, what would have to be on a list like this, the Star Wars Holiday Special. Star Wars Holiday Special sucks. Let's get that out of the way. It's awful. It is horrific. Um, Luke in the Holiday Special looks less real than Luke in the season finale of Mandalorian Season 2, okay? Um, it's just bad looking. It's another of these instances where let's have a bunch of Wookiees on screen and not translate what they're saying and have them have a lassie kind of conversations back and forth. Um, 
another reason why I don't like some recent other stories where they're like, yeah, let's put characters, you know, in the story and not translate. So it's hard to figure out what the hell they're saying, except for like, a, what, Lassie, Timmy's in the well kind of stuff. Um, I forget what it was. I think it's um, the newest volume, I know, the only volume so far of the manga that was released by Viz for uh, High Republic has a Wookiee Jedi Master who is constantly saying stuff and everybody that talks to him just repeats it back like, oh, really? You think this? So that you know what the hell he's saying. Really, really frustrating. Um, that's kind of started, kind of get a good start with really focusing on that kind of stupidity back in the holiday special, which also, of course, includes a musical number by Carrie Fisher when she was probably incredibly high. Uh, the Wookiee porn, or Wookiee at least softcore virtual porn thing with Itchy. If you haven't seen it, you don't want to, hopefully. Um... And really the only thing of that holiday special that has seen official release has been the cartoon. And it's gotten a lot of attention recently, of course, with Boba Fett returning with now his own show, The Book of Boba Fett, showing up again uh, in Mandalorian. Um, it's gotten some love. It's wound up with the cartoon actually showing up on Disney Plus uh, in a slightly altered, tweaked version of the opening and closing kind of stuff than what we saw on physical media. And yeah, we saw physical media releases on the... Uh, Original trilogy bonus disc for the complete saga and then the couple reissues of this. You could find it. Um, you could find it within the bonus features buried somewhat, kind of in a similar way, on the Blu-ray bonus disc released in 2020 in the Skywalker Saga set or the Ultimate Collector's Edition of The Empire Strikes Back or in other regions, the various other Black Border releases that actually include the Blu-ray bonus disc, which ours do not unless it's the 4K version. Um, so it's gotten some love, but the rest of it, really not so much. And yeah, it's horrible. It's really, really bad. I'm not sure I'd want to watch it more than once every couple of decades, if that. But it simply has not been released. And for the longest time, it has been one of those things that should have been released on home video for Star Wars that never has been. And on a side note relating to that, I know somebody's going to say, the rest of droids, the rest of Ewoks. They found release in other parts of the world, just not here. In the UK, they were missing one episode per season. There were even other regions in non-English-speaking regions that actually, I believe, saw everything for Droids and Ewoks. So those don't wind up counting, even though in the US, they got some serious short shrift. But the holiday special? Yeah. Yeah, it needs to see a release someday. It's horrible, but it's a part of this saga's history. It's an infamous part of its history. Anybody who wants to see it has seen it by watching a bootleg or something or watching it on YouTube or something. It needs an official release. I doubt it'll ever get one. That brings us to number three, which is sort of a collective thing here, which is all the Disney Plus stuff. All of it, right? Um, where is our season set of Mandalorian season one, or perhaps season two, or Book of Boba Fett, or Visions, or the Lego specials, and so on and so on and so on. All these things being released on Disney Plus that do not have a physical equivalent yet, and may not get them. Exclusive content is always going to be a thing, right? As long as a streaming service has exclusive content that is in demand, they probably won't want to release it on physical media because they want to get people to come in and subscribe. And they want people to come in and subscribe for a year just to watch something very quickly or subscribe on a monthly basis and forget to unsubscribe at some point. Um, but it's the big draw for the streaming services. I get it. Um, we have, however, seen some streaming services that put out their original content on home media after the fact, like what happens with Star Trek Discovery from CBS All Access, now known as Paramount Plus, uh, or the Marvel stuff coming through Netflix, at least for some of those earlier seasons, though the latter seasons, the latter series even, didn't wind up getting those releases. No releases in the US for Iron Fist or for Punisher or for Defenders. Iron Fist gets one season in the UK and so on and so on and so on. Um, TV series releases from Disney don't tend to happen very often anymore. Most of the Marvel stuff or the latter Marvel stuff hasn't gotten releases in the US. Most of that has even stopped in places like the UK. So it is perhaps an unrealistic expectation to think that anytime soon we would get home video releases on physical media of the Disney Plus Star Wars stuff. But there's a lot of it now. It continues to grow. It is some of the best modern current canon Star Wars stuff out there. And yet the only way to see it is streaming at this point, which for those who are collectors of physical media, is a giant gaping hole in the Star Wars home video library. Um, so number three for me, collectively, all the Disney Plus stuff. Hopefully you'll see release someday, but I'm not holding my breath. Number two, 
For many, I'm sure number two should be higher up on the list, not number two so close to number one. But it's because of my predilection, my personal preferences, and the fact that I love, 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 love watching movies, particularly Star Wars movies, in 3D at home. I love it. The fact that you can watch The Force Awakens and Rogue One on American releases in 3D, on Blu-ray 3D, fantastic. The fact that you can import from overseas The Last Jedi, Solo, and Rise of Skywalker, I love it, fantastic. All the Marvel stuff, I'm picking it up, right? I'm picking up the 3D stuff that does get releases in the US, but it doesn't happen very often for stuff that I like, like, uh, say, Dune, perhaps. Um, but for me, 3D viewing is a fantastic way to view these films. And I don't want to say it brings another dimension to it, because that's kind of a bad pun, but it really kind of does. It's it's another way to experience it with a, I was going to say depth, but depth, I guess, is another bad pun. Uh, another aspect to it that really is enjoyable for someone who's into that kind of stuff like me. And the fact that we know, we know that all three of the prequels did indeed go through a finished 3D conversion, but have never been released on Blu-ray 3D. That, to me, is another glaring hole in the Star Wars Home Video Library. I want to be able to sit with 3D glasses at home. So not these, not these because they don't work with my TV. It's a different set of glasses. But I want to be able to watch The Phantom Menace as I saw it in 3D on the big screen when it had its theatrical debut. I want to be able to see Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, the latter of which is my favorite prequel film, one of my favorite Star Wars films. I want to be able to see that film in 3D at home, the way people were able to see them at celebrations. But I can't. No one can. Because they have not ever released the prequels that exist in 3D in 3D on home media. And now, 3D's moment has passed. You're not seeing many 3D releases in the U.S. Disney stopped with 3D releases in the U.S. a while ago. You're not seeing 3D releases for a lot of Disney stuff now, even in the U.K. There are some places that still get it like Japan, but who knows how long that's going to last. Blu-ray 3D is on its way out. We had the opportunity, perhaps at its height, to see Blu-ray 3D releases of all three of the prequels because they exist. We didn't. And now, probably, we won't. And that, for a 3D lover like myself, really, really sucks. And finally, now that we've seen the holiday special, only one that probably everybody out there is going to agree on, and that is... My number one, which is an unaltered original theatrical version of A New Hope. Unaltered theatrical versions of all of them, great. But for Empire and Jedi, at least, they're very close to their theatrical releases and their original releases, so it's not really a big thing. Um, we do see some slight tweaks depending on what format something's being released on later. We, of course, see a lot of tweaks to the original trilogy as we go through the special editions and the various iterations after that. But A New Hope, even when it hit home video for the very first time in 82, was not its original theatrical version. Even before the tweaking of the audio that brought back C-3PO's line in 85 for releases starting with a VHS and Beta in 86, even before that, it still was not the original theatrical version. It had the subtitle. It had the reorganized opening crawl. Um, and in that sense, it meant that on home video, because that had already happened in theaters, we weren't going to get an original version. And they tried, right? In 2006, they tried. This is the Best Buy 10. They tried to give us the so-called unaltered versions, the original theatrical versions, but not really, right? Because what was this? As I've said a million times on the show already, um, that was basically the definitive collection THX remastered version from 1993 where they just sliced off the opening crawl and slapped in an opening crawl that was scanned from a print uh, of the original theatrical version where it didn't have the subtitle and the slightly differently aligned uh, opening crawl and everything. And then they put that out on a substandard de compressed DVD. That's still not the original version. It's multiple iterations into tinkering with the sound. And now it's basically just a different version than anything we had seen before, because now it's the 1993 version with a spliced on opening, which is basically a new 2006 version. The fact that we are now approaching basically the 50th anniversary, the 50th anniversary is going to be in 2027. That is five years from now. We're at 45 years right now. The fact that we're hitting the 45th anniversary and heading towards eventually getting to the 50th anniversary in 
not that long. And we still haven't seen an unaltered version on home video for A New Hope at all. Not just not on digital, not just not in 4K, literally at all ever. That is a damn shame. Especially since some of these releases have included ones that wound up going into places like the AFI Century Collection. Um, things that are supposed to represent its place in history. The, the 75th Anniversary Collection for 20th Century Fox. Right, places that are supposed to represent its place in the history of that film company, and yet it's not the original version, even an early version in those cases, showing up in those collections. Uh, in the collection for 20th Century Fox, it was a 2004 cut. In the case of the AFI Century Collection, it was a 1997 version, the special edition. This is really something that we need to see on home video, just from a historical perspective, from a preservation perspective. There are some great fan preservations of the original version of A New Hope, and you know, of other Star Wars films. But those are fan efforts. Fans shouldn't have to do that. It shouldn't have to be fans going back and saying, this is such an important piece of film history, we are going to make sure that it is preserved in its best way possible. That shouldn't be up to us as fans. That should be something that someone along the way at 20th Century Fox or at Disney stepped up and said, we need to do this. This should have been Lucas saying, this should be done. But to Lucas's mind, it's this evolving film, and the newest cuts are the definitive version, presumably. McClunky was always meant to be there. Honestly, the fact that it doesn't exist on home video at all, even going as far back as the original Star Wars home video releases for A New Hope in its entirety back in 1982 is mind-boggling to me. And really kind of a blight and a mark on home video history in general not just Star Wars, home video. So yeah, for me, number one, you can count the unaltered versions of any of them as part of this, but specifically the unaltered version of A New Hope with its original crawl in its original form, not some hybridized, bastardized version like they did in 2006. That really is number one as the gaping hole, the missing item in the Star Wars home video library. So there you have it, guys. My top five. Star Wars The Legacy Revealed, needs to be out there. Star Wars Holiday Special needs to be out there. The stuff from Disney Plus needs to be out there in physical releases that you can get at retail. The 3D prequels need to finally be out there, though I doubt it'll ever happen for them or most of this other stuff. And the unaltered edition of A New Hope in a real unaltered edition form. Um, you'll probably agree with some of these. Maybe there's some that I missed that you would put on the list, but I did only have five to work with and that one honorable mention. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers. Though, I will say, if you are holding your breath waiting for any of these to actually be released, the Force will not save you if you simply don't ever breathe. Please breathe. They're probably not going to happen anyway.